Let's talk about section 9.3, counting elements of disjoint sets, the addition rule. Okay, so I mentioned in the previous video when we were looking at the multiplication rule that the addition rule really addresses something quite different. Whereas in the multiplication rule, we were talking about a multi-step process. Here, we're focused on different sets and counting elements of sets. Um, initially, we'll focus on sets that do not overlap. That's the easier situation. And then what to do if the sets do have elements in common. Okay, so remember that when we're dealing with a finite set, we use this notation n of the set to denote the number of elements in that set. Okay, so if the set is a, n of a is the number of elements in a. We're going to see that come up a lot in this section. So the addition rule says if you have a finite set and you can divide that up into disjoint subset, so a partition is a word we used for that uh, earlier in this course, then the number of elements in the set A is going to be the sum of the number of elements from each of those mutually disjoint subsets. Okay, and it makes sense if you think about it, you know, if you, uh, let's say you're talking about guests in a hotel, and you partition those into the number that are have a room on the first floor, and the number who have a room on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor. Um, then the number of guests total staying at that hotel could be found by taking the number on the first floor plus the number on the second floor plus the number on the third floor, etc. Um, makes sense. As long as there's no overlap between those sets, then you're not counting anything twice and you're not missing anything in the count. And that's really the the idea behind everything you find in this section is we want to make sure we count everything in the set A without counting anything twice and without missing anything. Okay, and so as in this case, where these subsets do not overlap, but their union is A, that ensures that we're not counting anything twice because they have no elements in common. But we are counting everything in A because the A is the union of all those subsets. So every element in A is in one of those subsets. Okay, and so based on that addition rule, We can look at some other rules. Um, let's say A is a finite subset, uh, sorry, finite set with a subset B. Okay, well, one way to partition A is to say the elements in B is one subset, so B, and then A minus B would be the rest of A. Okay, and it's important here that B is a subset of A. Uh, so B doesn't have any elements that are outside of A. Um, so that would be a way to partition A into two subsets, B and A minus B. And then if we rearrange that addition rule, we get this formula that says the number of elements in A minus B is the number of elements in A minus the number of elements in B. Okay. Um, that comes in handy from time to time. The complement rule, which is actually not called the complement rule in the book, but I think for convenience I'm going to call it that. Um, the complement rule is especially helpful when you're dealing with probability. So I'm going to show this to you in two ways. So let S be a finite sample space. And A is an event in S. And remember, all that means to be an event in S is it's a subset of S. Then we could say the number of elements in the complement of A is the number of elements in S minus the number of elements in A. And this is really that difference rule, um, just using different 
you know, uh, labels for the sets and, and using that complement notation. Um, because S we can think of as the, you know, the, the universal set, essentially. It's, it's, it's the sample space of all possibilities. A is a subset of that. The complement of A would be the same thing as saying S minus A. Um, so there we see the difference rule just in a different form. But uh, as I said a, a couple of minutes ago, it, the complement rule is really particularly useful when you're talking about probabilities. So if we divide everything by the number of elements in S and remember our probability formula, the probability of A is the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in S. So if we take that equation and divide everything by the number of elements in S, what we get is this. The probability of the complement of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. That's very useful in problems where it's difficult to compute the probability of A, but it's easier to compute the probability of the complement of A. And that comes up pretty often, actually. So um, we'll keep that in mind when we see these probability examples is that, you know, maybe it's easier to calculate the probability of the complement um, rather than the probability of A itself. Okay. Um, moving on to the inclusion-exclusion rule. Okay, now here's the part of this section where we focus on cases where we're talking about the number of elements in the union of two sets that do have elements in common or that may have elements in common. Okay, we know if they share no elements, we can just add the number of elements from the first set to the number of elements in the second set, and that would tell us the number of elements in the union. But if they already had some elements in common, then that would result in counting some elements twice. So we don't want to do that. So here's how this inclusion exclusion rule works. So if A, B, and C are finite sets, and let's focus on just two of those sets, the number of elements in the union of A and B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in their intersection. So all that does is it says we'll count everything in A, we'll count everything in B, and then we have counted some things twice. The things we've counted twice are the, exactly the things in the intersection. So we'll subtract that off, which will result in those elements being counted once, which is what we want. Okay, so take the number of elements in A, take the number of elements in B, subtract any elements they have in common so that we've counted everything in the union once. Now with three sets, this is more complicated. And I did not include a diagram in this video, but if you think of three sets in a Venn diagram, you're gonna have a lot of different regions. You'll have the region of elements that are in A only and not in B and C. You'll have the region of elements that are in A and B but not C. You'll have a region of elements that are in all three sets. So the inclusion exclusion rule is more complicated and it looks like this. Um, so if we want the union of those three sets, we count the number of elements in A, count the number of elements in B, count the number of elements in C, we add those up, but then we have to subtract some numbers of elements from certain intersections. And then notice at the end we add the number of elements in the intersection of A, B, and C. Okay. Um, the idea there, just briefly, is imagine you consider an element that's that all three of those sets have in common. So some element that's right in the middle, it's in A, it's in B, and it's in C. 
Well, then it's counted when you count the elements in A. It's counted when you count the elements in B. It's counted when you count the elements in C. But then it's subtracted for each of these intersections. So now you've added it three times, you've subtracted it three times, but to make sure you count that one element, you need to add it back in. So that's, uh, you know, that can help sort of understand why we add that last term at the end. Um, that's the inclusion exclusion rule. It can be really handy. Um, you'll see some exercise in the homework where, you know, you're trying to keep track of these different categories that overlap and you have some information you want to figure out the number of elements in in certain uh, unknown um, amounts and a Venn diagram can be really helpful for that okay along with this rule okay the next section we'll get into is section 9.4 it covers the pigeonhole principle I uh, hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.